While student activism has been prevalent in schools for decades, it seems that in the past few years, students taking action and standing up for what they believe in results in flared adult tempers. I decided I want to investigate recent actions taken by students at Homer High School, as well as the responses of adults in our community. To honor the 17 lives lost in the Parkland shooting last year, Homer High School students organized a walkout. However, many adults in the community had mixed opinions about this. In an attempt to make this documentary as least biased as I could, I interviewed Cheyenne Salee, someone who was quite opposed to the walkout and wasn't shy about sharing her opinions. Okay. So in your years at the high school, what examples of student activism have you seen? Uh, there's the walkout, there's like Wear Red for Ed, little stuff like that. And what have you personally participated in? Uh, wear red for Ed. I didn't do the walkout because they brought politics into it and lost the original cause. Did you? You did another form of activism though, yeah? To yep. show your respect for the victim. We went out to the flagpoles and had a moment of silence. Left the politics, everything out of it. And you posted that on Facebook, right? Yeah. What response from adults in the community did you receive? A lot of them were really supportive for not conforming to it and just going out and being like well this is what everybody else is doing and there were some that were like you're so stupid for doing that why would you ever do something like that one of them even went after my parents would you say that you got a more positive response than the people who went out onto the turf i don't know it was kind of mixed like a lot of people supported them but like I said, they brought politics into it, and I just didn't want to support that. The entire purpose of it was to respect people who lost their lives, and politics and all that should have never been brought into it. Do you think it's appropriate for adults in the community to be belittling high school students on Facebook? No. You shouldn't belittle anyone, let alone a high school student, just because they have a differing opinion than yours. Do you think that the way adults react to students trying to put their voice out there and show their opinions on things, do you think it hinders students' confidence in trying to make a change? It really depends, because like, you can post one thing and everybody will support it, but you post another thing and everybody will bash you, so it really just depends on like what you're posting about. Were you personally affected by the negative? responses that you received? I didn't think anything of them. It's like, so what? You have an opinion that's not the same as mine. Are you going to continue to take stands for what you believe in, regardless of negative responses from adults? Yeah, why wouldn't I? And do you think, since there's countless accusations of this on homework communications, or any other part of the internet where adults can voice their opinions, do you think that uh, teachers are brainwashing us, manipulating us, or using us to further their political agenda? Uh, I mean, there's probably some that do definitely push a left-wing agenda onto students. And, like, there's teachers that you can definitely tell they have a political agenda and they want to push it on their students, whether it's, like, giving them bad grades through their writing assignments, yada yada, for differing opinions. It's like, 
well, if I agreed with you, then you would have gotten a better grade. Do you think student activism is important? Yeah, students need to be involved because you know, they are kind of the future. Do you think that through these events, whether it be the walkout, whether it be Wear Red for Ed, or even writing letters to Representative Vance, do you think that we make a difference? That's the thing, like, a lot of people, they're not going to take high school students seriously. They don't really realize that, you know, this is the future. They have to decide what they want to live in, what kind of world. Like, you saw the video where Representative Vance responded to the letters. I don't really think that made too much of a difference. Do you think that if we were perceived differently, if we were taken more seriously, we would actually be able to make a difference and a change? Definitely. What do you think we could do to change how we're seen in the community? Just keep standing up for what you want in the world. Keep trying to make a difference because if you just give up, nobody's going to take you serious when you finally try again. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the audio for the video to work. However, I wanted to move on to the issue of students writing to Representative Sarah Vance and her response. Perhaps one of the most outspoken and upset about the Sarah Vance situation was sophomore Larry Dunn. He even wrote an open letter to Representative Vance following her response to HHS students. So I decided I would interview him next. What is student activism to you? Student activism is students taking action on political and social issues that they feel passionate about. What are some examples of student activism that you've seen in our high school since you've been here? Uh, letter writing, editorials, participating in marches and protests the rest of the town, things like that. Have you seen the responses from adult community members on those issues? Um, a little bit. Mostly you just get form letters and generic responses, but that's kind of to be expected. Are you aware that a lot of adults think that teachers are using us and brainwashing us to further their political agenda? Mm -hmm. What is and your opinion on that? I think that's ridiculous. It's, discre it's discrediting an entire class and group of people based on their affiliation with the public school system. Has a teacher ever told you to write something? No, they've not. They've only congratulated me for writing stuff. <laughs> so you wrote a letter to Representative Vance following her uh, not-so-polite <laughs> reading of our letters. Have mm -hmm. you gotten a response from that? Uh, yes, I got a form letter. Um, it was the response you'd expect from politicians. I expected a little more since as a youth writing editorials isn't terribly common, she'd at least say something about it as a local representative, but... Um, do you think student activism is important? Oh, absolutely student activism is important. Do you think that we could make a change in our country or in our community at such a young age? I think if people are willing to listen to what we have to say in our unique perspective, absolutely we can. And what would you say to community members who think that we're stupid or just form our own opinion? Um, I guess just, like, give yourself a chance to listen to it. Like, be open to the idea of student input. And I mean, there's going to be some bad student input, there's going to be bad adult input. That's just the way it is, but we live in a, we live in a society. <laughs> Next, I wanted to look at the student responses to uh, some of these comments made by adults in the community. So, as someone who often speaks out and actually interacts with the adults saying these mean things on Facebook, I decided to interview Sierra Jones. Would you say you're a relatively outspoken person? Yeah. 
have you been outspoken about any political subject that comes through our school? Yeah, for sure. How? How have you expressed these opinions using what platforms or mediums? Mediums. Um, it all started on Facebook. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. Um, I didn't have much of a political interest. I knew what I thought was right and wrong, but it never was outspoken until obviously you see on Facebook and you read comments that you don't agree with. And I think I was in middle school or it was the start of freshman year that I really got into it with someone about immigrants and Skittles. And from there, it just further digressed into I was reading these comments and actively trying to respond to them because at the time I thought my voice could change their mind. But as you learn on Facebook, it's not gonna happen. And then it progressed into Snapchat my junior year. Is that when the walkout happened? Yeah, my junior year. That's when it progressed to Snapchat, but those are really the only two platforms I use besides face-to-face -face contact when it comes to uh, my political ideals. So in recent times, it's no lie that you get into some tips in the comments Ooh, section. some tips. <laughs> the comments section yeah. on Facebook on various things. Do you think it's effective to argue on Facebook? <sighs> I would like to say no, but if I knew the answer was no, then I wouldn't do it. Um, I think it's always effective to get your opinion out there whether it's going to change someone's mind or not. You're always going to find people who agree with you, and you're always going to find people who don't agree with you. And as long as you get it out there, you kind of know where you stand in the crowd and who stands with you. Um, no, I don't think getting to arguments is very effective. <laughs> For sure, it gets both sides mad, and when you're mad, you don't want to listen to each other. But it, it is hard in the moment to not want to be mad at someone who it's not even agreeing with you, but it's... It can go into someone's rights, it can go into someone's feelings, it can go into how people are being treated on the streets, and that's just not how you feel, that's how people are being treated. And when you see someone who doesn't think it's real or agree with that, then obviously, you know, you want to fight with them. But no, it's not effective. So, <clears throat> what kind of people do you find yourself arguing with the most over, I'd say politics in general, but let's get more specific and talk about, uh, politics in our school, whether it's the walkout, whether it's gun violence, budget cuts. What well, people I experience, it's sad to say it's the parents of students I go to school with, it's people I work with, it's people I work under, it's, I've seen people in the store who have gone off on us and other students on social media and they don't recognize us, that we're the faces that they're talking to, but uh. Yeah, when it comes to the walkout and you see like someone's parent calling you a sheep or saying that you're being brainwashed, or it's not even you, it's the teachers, it's the principal, it's everyone else but you making your voice. Yeah, those are the people you see. It sucks. <laughs> it sucks that it has to be people you see every day, but they're like parents, they don't see you. So, would, how has the community's response to uh, student activism affected you personally? Would you say that it's make you, made you more reserved in voicing your opinions? Or ha do you feel like it's kind of added fuel to your fire and made you even more outspoken? It's, it's both. Because if I just go off blindly on a, like, a mad rampage then my opinions aren't taken well. But if I sit back and really think about how I'm going to present my opinion and how I'm going to present myself to the adults while also being backed up by all the emotions and feelings I had, I feel like it'd be more powerful. And I feel like that's the only way. Because as we've interviewed someone earlier this year who expressed that students who put too much thought, not even too much thought, but are too articulate, in their responses doesn't make them seem like they're actual students. I feel like if we lean too much one way or too much another and can't find a harmony of both, then we can't really be taken seriously. 
you're not more reserved in sharing your opinions. You're just more well thought out on how you do it. You speak more from facts and opinions than you do from emotions in the moment. Yeah. Because if you speak from emotions, I've been told by multiple adults that, oh, you're going through a phase. It's all your hormones right now. You think that this is going to be the biggest moment in your life and you're hyping yourself up and your friends are hyping yourself up with their fake dramas and your fake lives and that we're too much too emotional it's not taken seriously but it's been reassuring to know that there are also adults who are emotional because i work with a woman whose kids are being affected by the budget cuts you know her school is going to cease to exist her kids going to have to separate from his best friend because they live in two different districts you know I see my own school being condensed or ceasing to exist I see students who are still mad about the walkout I still see all these emotions and it's good to know that they're still going strong and it's not just in the kids it's in the adults so it's kind of been seen that parents who lead one way or another tend to reward students who voice their opinions that coincide with theirs but uh discourage yeah discourage those who go against what is your opinion on that <clears throat> it's so dumb bro it <laughs> no it's not it's not dumb that's not the right word to use it's would you say ridiculous <laughs> it's, yeah it's ridiculous it's more than ridiculous it gets them nowhere from seeing a parent react that way and the reward system they use it's <laughs> honestly it's like it's redundant you know <laughs> you're not doing anything you know because they are applying the same mechanism that it's a however I don't know how to word it I really don't they're just giant children, you know? They chastise us, they make fun of us, they call us names, thinking that it's gonna discourage us, you know? And that if they reward the students who think the same as them, they're gonna get somewhere. That they're gonna cultivate the like-minded students and that's gonna amass and I don't know, maybe change our opinions, but when we look at that, we just feel bad for your kids. We feel bad that, you know, the kids who don't agree with you have to put up with this behavior and expect to give you respect and call you an adult. It's funny. <laughs> I, I think it's funny, I really do, that it happens, you know? Yeah. I don't know where they're trying to go with it. Do you think that student activism makes a difference student activism makes a difference for sure it does yeah because we see all the time you know this student is going to this school the student's going to this school the principal of the high school achieved this you know student council did this and you see it in the homer news and you see it on facebook and if the community thinks that the student achieved something great they make it look good even though that a student may voice their opinion on a different matter, whether it's political or you know relates to the community and all of a sudden it's no longer as valid, even though that's the same student who achieved the greatness that the community praised, you know? But for sure I think that we make a difference because if, it's <laughs> if it bothers the community enough that they need to talk about it, then I think we're doing something, you know? if it when Sarah Vance had to make that apology video. You know, it really showed that even if you're a state representative, you can't undermine us, you know? But I think for our, where we are now and where we're standing now in our generation, voting and making that difference has grown. Like a lot of people are encouraging that you do it and that it, if you do it long enough, it's gonna make a change. And I, I hope that's right. You know, I don't want to say the fire has died, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's easy to stay afloat 
when you're having a conversation with someone, but it's harder when you have to go out and make that change. Do you think the change starts with you? It'd be cool if it did. <laughs> no. I think for it to work, yes. But I'd have to believe that by me making a change, you would make a change. And to do that, I'd have to change someone's mind. And that's hard. Do you think that the, uh, I'm not going to say bigotry, that's a little bit <laughs> But do you think all the backlash and all the conflict that students have experienced with uh, adults, quote unquote, in our community, do you think that's preparing us for the real world? Preparing us for tips that we're going to get in with people who don't think the same way that we do? Yeah. You know, it's better to get some experience than none. Obviously, it's easier to do it online than it is to actually confront people and the day that you do have to confront someone it's going to be different and it's going to be harder but you're going to be more prepared and I feel like for home or high school students especially with certain teachers that they're able to learn under they're definitely going to learn how to manage their opinion and how to control it and how to portray it in a way that is not offensive but you know it's not backing down you can have a conversation with someone and actually change their mind. You can have a debate in the middle of class with someone and like change their mind. Or if not change their mind, come to a mutual understanding because a lot of it is my words offended you and you didn't want to listen. So if I can change that, my wording a little to something that you can understand, it'd be better. And I think with that teaching, we'd be more prepared to go out into the world and actually talk with people and have our tiffs but it not be harmful in any way, you know? I think for my final question, I just, in your opinion, do you think that Homer High School gives its students political freedom? I feel like the Homer High School follows the guidelines that it has to, but regarding incidents in the past, yes, because the principal has portrayed to us he does what he feels is right. And if the community doesn't like that, then him and this teacher step on the, and they be responsible and they listen to com like the complaints, but they don't punish the students, you know? They let the students know, these are the guidelines, this is what's gonna happen if you miss your class or if you do this, but they don't hold us back and they don't you know, promote us either, you know? They're, they're a mutual, not a mutual, a neutral, good they're a neutral force in encouraging us in class to advocate for what we feel is right but not changing our minds about it and advising that if you do this this is what's going to happen but i'm not going to tell you no and i'm not going to physically hold you back so for homer high school in itself yeah i think they're doing a pretty good job at letting students have their political freedom to get a final opinion, I thought it would be best to interview Douglas McCloskey, the principal of Homer High School, and just get his take on student activism and the way that the community has responded. So, are you aware of the amount of negativity students have received? Yeah, I have for a couple of different things. Uh, it's interesting, we had a couple different uh, student activism. One, they were doing the thing on the out on the... Um, football field the for anti-violence for the walkout, um, which was interesting because, you know, if you look at all of the um, social media online, you know, the Homer communication blog, all of them was, well, a teacher must have put them up to it or somebody must have put them out there or those kids wouldn't do it on their own, uh, which is interesting because that's totally, totally uh, uh, far, far from the truth. Uh, the other thing I think is interesting that most people don't know is that there were people who were for uh, gun for gun rights and people who were against, and they both went out there together, yeah. uh, just as a show of unity, which I think is is great, and which would be great in the community if they had done that. But those were students who, uh, uh, knowingly, who were for and against gun violence, went out there together. Um, the other one was the letters to um, 
one of our representatives and how again it's assumed that well we told people that they had to do it and what to write when the reality is kids could have written whatever they wanted yeah. and then the well-written ones um, they were like well teachers must have done that because um, like the people who went and talked at the open house for the representatives uh, town meeting they're like oh teachers wrote that and gave it to them when it wasn't even a it wasn't even a conversation in any classes they did that we just have some very eloquent well thought out students but again students are marginalized oh they couldn't think on their own we're making them do this and it's just pure false yeah. i mean we have some very smart well thought out kids who even if a teacher was telling them to do something wouldn't write that yeah. they're going to write what they believe and we have lots of people who are liberal we have lots of people who are conservative uh, some of our teachers who have been labeled as very liberal are actually card-carrying NRA members, and people don't know that, and that's how it should be. But uh, anyway, I don't know if that's what you want. <laughs> so do you have any other specific questions? Or? Yeah. Uh, how mm -hmm. much backlash does the school receive? Like, do you receive parents coming in or mm -hmm. phone calls or emails? We've received phone calls. We've seen received emails. Um Again, they were kind of misguided. Oh, this happened. How are we, you know, like the walkout, like we're letting this, we planned this. Um, you know, no, no to all that. All we're trying to do is, is make sure it's the least disruption possible. Um, because you do have rights. You do have uh, First Amendment rights like anybody else. They are a little bit muted because you're in a school. You got to make sure things run smoothly. But, you know, you're allowed to wear your Trump paraphernalia as long as it's not causing a riot. Mm -hmm. So, or vice versa, your Obama um, shirts, as long as it isn't causing a problem in school. So, would you say that you received like a large quantity of? Well, for the walkout, there was a large amount. Um, again, it's just because people assumed different things. Again, it's like, well, these kids couldn't have done this on their own. There's no way they could have could have wanted to do that, and yeah. they don't realize the type of student that we have here. Yeah. Um, um, how do you respond to the... Well, you try to give them the facts. Um, you know, one of the things that was, was interesting was we got this thing that, um, and I'll, I'll say the name, that Mrs. Mall went and bought pizza for everybody who went to the walkout. And I'm like, well, first of all, that's a lot of pizza. Uh, you know, and I'm like, well, what, what's going on? Why this? And, and if you read the blog, that's one of these things. Well, yeah, she even bought him pizza and I'm like well, where did this come from and she's like I didn't buy him pizza but what happened was Girl Scouts had their meeting and they always have pizza so they took the pizza box down with them they for whatever reason they left it on the um, football field so she picked it up and threw it in the trash so somebody saw her with a pizza box and they're like see she went and bought pizza for everybody to go to this even though there were hundreds of students down there yeah. Um, and, you know, I finally had to say, look, we have the camera footage that this is what happened. She picked up a box and she threw it away. Uh, no pizza was purchased. Um, so, yeah, you just, you just um, one, you don't fight with them because people are going to believe what they want to believe. But you give them, you try to give them the facts. Look, this is what happened. Um, and then you don't get in a fight because you're, you're just going to lose with that. So... So, uh, what do you get a political issue brought to your attention, uh, say, like, with the walkout, and a student approaches you about what they want to do, uh, what actions do you take, and are there any guidelines that you follow? So, obviously, if it's a walkout, if we know ahead of time, so this was being planned, and we found out about it because we heard from some other people. So, the one thing that we did do is, like, look, if you walk out during school, realize there's natural consequences for skipping class. So we would have to, whatever the punishment is for skipping a class, we would have to give it to everybody who walked out. But could we do this in a way that it didn't disrupt school? So that's when um, the kids who were organizing were like, well, we can do it during lunch. We're like, fine, you can do whatever you want. You can leave campus during lunch. Um, so I was really proud of them to be able to do what they wanted to do while not breaking rules here at the school. So... Um, so in that case, we could do it. But, you know, the reality is people, people do things. I mean, we've had people at the flag poles, um, you know, as long as they're not disrupting the, the, the school, they're not getting in the way of anybody else's rights. Um, 
you know, again, we have to follow the Constitution like everybody else. Uh, so what is your opinion on the accusations of staff members brainwashing, manipulating, or using students to further a political agenda? I, I, I think that's pretty ridiculous. I mean, don't get me wrong, we've had a couple teachers who are very passionate liberally and very passionate um, um, conservatively, and I've had to talk to them a couple times. I'm like, look, you can bring these things up, but you, gotta, you, know, you can't have your opinion in there. Um, and so, yeah, there have been, there've been like two instances where I've had to talk to them and say, look, you need to tone it, tone it down. Nobody should be able to guess whether you're conservative or whether you're liberal. Um, and that happens. But if you're talking about that there's some liberal scheme that we're brainwashing people, that's just not true. And the reality is we have very conservative, we have very liberal, and we have a lot of people in the middle. Um, and you probably want to be able to guess 99% of our teachers, um, religious or political background. So, but you know, people only hear what they want to hear. They see one instance of something bad, even if it doesn't happen in the school, that just proves what they already believe, and same thing, you know, on both sides of the spectrum, so. Um, so as our principal, do you think, just in years past, that there's more of a problem brought up when it's a liberal issue that students are taking a stance against? Well, we get them for liberal and conservative. Um, I mean, we've had both. I mean, what people don't realize is before that, I mean, they consider the walkout a liberal walkout, mm -hmm. even though the whole school, you know, whether they believed it or not, went out there as a sign of unity. Uh, we've had conservative uh, protests here also. So, um, but I do think that um, since the past presidential election, things are definitely, people are worked up on both sides, liberal and Conservative, so if they hear anything, there's always there's more of a knee-jerk reaction now than there was before. Um, I could definitely agree with that. Would with conservative protests, is there as much of an uproar by liberal community members? No, no. But I've had people who, um, yeah, I've had people who've come in and there was a conservative and they wanted to kind of do a liberal counter protest but they got to realize that this, this is students so mm -hmm. it's got to be student led so if students want to do that great no we're not going to allow people in the community to come up and disrupt and protest on school grounds during the school day uh, that would be disruptive um, so again it's student driven so if we do have the protests it's if, if it's student driven great if it's outside organizations wanting to do this no um, how do you feel about some of the name calling that goes on when it's kind of a public discussion. Because I know in the past, well, like they, some of the they accuse students of maybe not being the smartest yes. solely because they're participating in these things. Right. Well, the and that's like in, and and that was done in the Homer communications with the the chamber talking about this. It's like yeah, there's a lot of name calling. The problem with name calling is is then you don't you don't get to talk about the issues. It's like well why. Why did they do that? Did they have? Do they have a reason? Um, you know, so if you just say, "Hey, you're stupid," then you're totally trying to shut them down because obviously maybe your argument might not be that strong. That's the way I take that. Uh, to me, but, you know, you need to talk about it. And I really think the interesting thing is, is that it's become so much right and left. Nobody has the perfect answer to anything because you know they need to look at all issues. You need need to be able to discuss them. Uh, the right has some great ideas, the left has some great ideas. Um, but when you do that, you know, I really am, um, I'm proud of the students at Homer High because they're willing to discuss the issues. Whether it's, you know, it's conservative or whether it's uh, liberal, they get together, they talk about the issues, they don't necessarily agree, but we're not throwing names at each other and, you know, we're trying to come up with solutions, so. You know, maybe some of those people who are adults who think they're so smart maybe need to come to the high school and learn from the kids. Um, see, how do you personally feel about student activism? I think it's great. I mean, you know, the whole point of um, high school is for you guys to be able to find your voice. Mm -hmm. 
and whatever it is you're passionate about to go out and to do and to make a difference. Um, you know, we had a girl a couple years ago who did stuff on the homelessness in Homer, created a homeless awareness day. I mean, it was a, a, a pretty big thing. That's the type of stuff that I think is great. Um, you know, whether, I really don't care whether it's super conservative or super liberal. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the issues. And um, I mean, that's what we're here for. Um, Do you think it's important for uh, high school students that sort of in such a formative age where we're like finding who we are, getting ready to set off into the world as adults? Do you think it's important for us to form our own political opinions and figure that out and be able to express them freely without getting? Yeah, we need, you need to be able you need to be able to de debate them. You need to be able to take a look at them. You need to. Um, again, look at uh, all part of them and, and then find your spot, you know. And the reality is, is that, you know, close to 100% of the students, you know, 80% of the population goes through here, you know, there's not, you know, not everybody comes out liberal, not everybody comes out conservative. Um, but you need to have a safe space where you can talk about these issues, the pros and cons, both ways, without teachers leading you one way or the other. Let's look at the facts. Here are the facts. Here's what this side's saying. Here's what the other side's saying. What's your opinion? Um, no, I think that's essential. I think the best way to end this documentary is for me to speak on what I learned from this experience, what I learned about student activism in homework. And what I ended up learning was, regardless of a student's political affiliation, we all really just want one thing, and that's to be listened to and taken seriously by adults.